Hey friends, and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about audio signal chain using Yolo Box when you're live streaming. Now, this is an additional video to 251, Master the Meter, where I went through all about setting unity gain through different devices and live streaming with Yolo Box. Check that video out for more information on how to set things to Unity. However, we'll touch on a few of those pieces here. Guys, I'm Rob with Robert Hand Photography. Just like you, I'm a customer of using Yellow Box products. I've been using them for four years now, and I've done hundreds of live streams, maybe even a thousand, probably not more than 2,000, but I've done a lot, and I've used it in all kinds of situations. And in the forums, I'm one of the senior members where I answer your questions and help you guys out. So if you've got a question, leave it down below. That should let you know that this video is not paid or sponsored. I'm making this video because I want to help Yolo Live, the company that makes Yolo Box, teach you guys how to use this product better. And currently, there's not a lot of information for you. So I'm producing this video for them. Hopefully, that they'll be able to use it to help you. If you have any questions or whatever else, hit me up on my email or DM me down below. Today, we're going to continue that conversation about audio, right? And we're talking about the different kinds of audio in the signal chain. You may recall in the last video, video 251, Mastering the Meter, that the signal chain is actually about all the stops, all the places the audio goes from your singer or your talent to the input into the microphone, through the microphone into the camcorder or the sound desk, from that into Yolo Box, and then from Yolo Box out into the cloud. We recognize that there's additional processing that the cloud might do based on their requirements. Some of you may not know, but the cloud, also known as the Content Delivery Network, is the place for which you stream. Twitch, RTMPS, YouTube, Facebook, you name it. All of those destinations that are outside of your control and outside of Yolo Box's control, all of those destinations will reinterpret normalize and change your audio. This is especially true as if you have poorly set audio in the first place. So if you've ever wondered why your audio sounds terrible online, but it sounds okay in person or through headphones, well, that's because your audio has a problem that the content delivery network is likely trying to solve for you. Now, there are many different reasons that your audio could sound bad. They are generally 90% to do with you, 5% to do with Yolo Box, and then the rest of the 5% to do with the cloud. Yolo Box is a hub device. It only puts out what it's given in. If, think of it like a baby. If you've got a baby and the baby's happy and it's not crying, everybody's happy. But if you've got a baby and the baby's upset and they're crying, it's not mom's fault and it's not the baby's fault. It's just what the baby is. But everyone else hears it and will assume it's somebody's fault and they're not going to blame the baby. They're probably going to blame mommy or daddy. Well, that's Yolo Box in this situation. When your audio sounds bad online, nine times out of ten, it's not Yolo Box, but Yolo Box gets blamed because Yolo Box is the hub, the place where your audio goes. I hope that this video and these explanations thus far will help you understand that you are mommy and daddy in this situation. You need to make sure that the baby, Yolo Box, doesn't scream by giving it the signal that it needs. Okay, let's look into this. I want to talk about two different types of microphones right now. We've got dynamic microphones like this one, and we have condenser microphones like a lavalier. The difference between dynamic and condenser are that dynamic microphones are not powered, and condenser microphones require power. We're not going to go into the type of microphones. That'll be for another video. But knowing that microphones have different power requirements also will help you understand that different microphones have different jobs. Dynamic microphones, microphones that do not require power, are generally very good for high sound pressure level devices and things like drums or singers because they have a very large dynamic range and since the microphone is not powered, the only excitement that the diaphragm, the part of the microphone that moves to create an, a signal that is picked up and preamplified or amplified in the preamp and then sent out, that process happens through the physical sound pressure level waves of your voice exciting the diaphragm. Now, because of that, condenser microphones usually are much smaller in size with the diaphragm than a uh, dynamic microphone. Dynamic microphones tend to usually be, be around half an inch, an inch, or larger, with an inch uh, diaphragm being the general. Most condenser microphones are the type that power your ring doorbell or a lavalier microphone, or a shotgun microphone. They're very small microphone capsules with tiny diaphragms. Because of their size, they're smaller, it does not take as much sound pressure wave or level or energy 
to excite the diaphragm to get it to move because it's smaller. And because it's smaller, it can move less, creating a smaller wave that is then amplified by its preamp circuit built into the microphone, which is why it requires power. That gets it up to a mic level signal that you can hear, which is why those tiny condenser microphones can be so small, but also pick up so much noise. It's also a reason that tiny condenser microphones sometimes are considered to be lifeless and tinny because they don't have the complete sound information because they're so tiny, they just overmodulate very quickly. Now, with those two things being the case, you will likely encounter both powered and non-powered microphones. To the extent of this video, that does not matter. And I share that with you so that you won't get caught up in one or the other. Because the inputs that you're going to put in through Yolo Box or th through your camcorder or camera will already be a signal that Yolo Box is ready to accept and won't require any amplification outside of what the system, the camera, the camcorder, or Yolo Box is already providing itself. So let's move to that system. In this case, me. I'm the source, right? I'm the source, and this dynamic microphone is the input. Now, I am not using a wire to connect today. I'm just using a wireless pack, a microphone pack. This wireless microphone pack does a very good job of just plugging in and has no additional gain controls. It is always at plus 12 decibels. Microphone packs or wireless microphones that have a gain knob or gain input setting will require you to choose a gain setting that best fits for Yolo Box, either on the microphone or through Yolo Box. When you can set gain on the microphone or you can set gain on the pack transmitter, that's the best place to do it. Now, as we look through here, we remember that this is all part of that signal chain specific to Unity Gain, which is optimizing your signal path so you have small noise at each step. That was video 251, Master the Meter. In this video, we're going to go to further depth right now. We talk about getting this over to the camera. Getting this microphone to the camera is taking place wirelessly right now. So I have a little pack, one end that plugs in here, and the other end that plugs into the back of my camcorder. Now, my camcorder has an XLR input, and that's great. The XLR input is an industry standard and they come in different sizes, but it doesn't matter if you get your audio into the camera through an XLR input or through some other wires that you might have, most commonly a 1 8 inch micro jack. I think this is a 3.4 millimeters. In any event, getting your sound into your camera or Yolo box is the first step. For our first demonstration, I'm running sound through the camera and then sending the sound into Yolo Box, which is displayed up here on the screen, through the HDMI option. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But while we're here, I want you to be able to see this. I have a set of levels. I understand that it's kind of hard to see, but these levels right here are hitting the meter at the minus 12 decibel mark. Sometimes they go over it, specifically with plosives, and s -s sibilant sounds like S's and S8's. Shh. Sometimes it goes over it, but it's generally staying around 12 decibels, minus 12 decibels, and it can peak to minus six and not sound overmodulated. That's the purpose of setting your, audi setting your audio gain properly. To adjust the audio gain on my camera, I would simply adjust the level of the signal coming in on my camera audio handle. Many times today, uh, you don't have to have a camcorder to have this kind of an input. It used to be just five years ago, you wouldn't really see this type of an input unless you bought a special accessory and they cost maybe five, seven, eight hundred dollars. But today, Sony, Panasonic, Canon, they all make accessories for your camera that also give you these controls. So fret not if you don't see it. Generally speaking, most cameras will have an audio input section that will allow you to adjust the amount of signal coming in even if you don't have a handle and you'll just do it through a menu or a software uh, uh, software section and that's fine too. Once we have our signal set to unity at the first step, we now are ready to move to the second step. That's where we are right here. I'd like for you to see that Yolo Box is now opening up into the audio panel. I've got a couple of different types of audio here already. What I'd like to share with you is that the program is turned on. The audio follows video. In my experience, never use it unless you 
have specific mites at specific places and you're doing a form of automation. That's for a different video. We won't cover that today. We have HDMI, which is off. When we look, we'll see that this is our audio meter signal. Now, I know that I'm getting good signal right now because as I've told you and as you've seen, I've set my audio so that that's at Unity here. I'm also running my audio out from this camcorder to the camcorder that's recording, and I can see that my levels up there are set to Unity as well right here. So both camcorders are set to the same level. They're set to Unity, which is excellent. So I know that the two camcorders are picking up excellent audio right now, and Yellow Box is not. It's not picking up audio because HDMI 1 is turned off. I want to show you we have HDMI 1, we have a microphone input that you can see right here, and we also have a video input. Should we add a video, any media that you might add will also pop up here. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and turn HDMI audio on. And now you can see in just a moment, audio levels begin to pop up on Yolo Box. Now this is great because currently Yolo Box is already set to pick up the proper meters. As I'm looking at Yolo Box, this green section right here, the section that is green, then the middle section is yellow, and then the very top section, the farthest right section is red. That right section is over modulation. And that goes from zero decibels to minus three decibels. The yellow section, which I'm not peeking in, just barely, the yellow section right there goes from that minus 3 decibels all the way down to minus 12 decibels, and the green section is from minus 12 decibels all the way back. Decibels are how we measure loudness. An increase of 3 decibels doubles the perceived loudness that your audience will hear. Well, it's not actually perceived. It truly does double the loudness, but it's not until you get to around 6 decibels that your audience will perceive a difference in level adjustment. So, 6 decibels is two, four times as loud as a uh, minus 6 signal. So, if we were starting at zero, 6 decibels at unity, I should say, if we were starting at unity, minus 12, minus 6 decibels is four times louder at minus 6 decibels than it was at minus 12 decibels, which would be unity. That's a big thing to know. So, from here, I would like you to also point out that we have some ways to adjust the audio. Currently, because I set this up to be appropriate for you, I have already set the audio input on Yolo Box to be minus 8.6 decibels. By doing so, I'm now able to get unity between all of my devices. Remember, it started with me. Then it went to the input. I cannot change the level on this input because it does not have that ability. I know that this is plus 12, so it's sending a strong microphone signal. The signal then went into the camera. The camera's preamps in their digital to analog converter, or the analog to digital converter on the way in and digital to analog on the way out to yellow box, converted that signal and I had to attenuate it, adjust it, turn it down until we matched right at our middle levels here on the dials. When I did that and I could see that was the same on my audio meters on the camcorder, I did that for the other camcorder that's recording so I know that these two are correct. However, the camcorder I'm pointing at right now, the one you're seeing me through, that is not in the audio signal chain. The reason that I needed that audio to be correct is because I'm recording all of our audio to that one so I don't have to synchronize the audio and record a separate track and do all of that in post. It makes my job easier. So there's another pro tip, use it wisely. From the synchronization and the, uni the from the Unity gain step that we did here in our gain, we then went to Yolo Box, which we see, and now we are at Unity throughout. The audio sounds as good here as it will online at the content delivery network if we were streaming because everything is set properly and being at minus 12 decibels puts us at a loudness factor for YouTube that is exactly what they want. If they do anything with it, they might compress it just to make the stream go a little bit more uh, easily, faster for viewers, but they won't uh, do much processing, if any, to it. Now, let's talk about something else. In this instance, I would like for you to realize that I have ran the audio from my microphone into my camcorder. Let's say I had two microphones, but four camcorders. One camcorder would be my A-cam. And 
I would run all of my audio into the A camera because by doing that, I will never need to or almost never need to adjust the delay. The reason is quite simple. Audio travels much faster than video because it's a smaller signal. And because of that, sometimes you need to delay the audio to match up with the video. Now, considering that audio delay is in one, millise one millisecond, and that's one one thousandth of a second, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, divide a thousand by 24, and that will tell you how long, how many frames times that number your latency is. You would do the same for 30 or 60 or 120 if you were trying to synchronize audio with those things. At that point in time, you would know the delay. Yellow Box gives you basically one half of a second up to 420 milliseconds, which isn't exactly a half of a second, but it's very close to it. If we needed that delay, we could turn it on for this particular microphone setup, but we do not need it. As a pro tip and a general rule, I do not run audio through Yellow Box. And it's not because Yolobox is not capable. It has nothing to do with that. Yolobox has mic and line in inputs for the very specific reason of running audio to it. However, in a live stream setting, it's easier to not have to deal with setting your audio delay. And many people have an issue with this. They find problems with it. And the reason comes because when you send the audio into your microphone, into your camcorder, into Yellow Box, you are actually synchronizing the audio with the camcorder's clock. This is excellent. At this point in time, the camcorder has already done the work for you. By this direction, you would then send your HDMI out to Yellow Box and turn HDMI on for your main camera, HDMI 1, 2, 3, whichever one you are using. And at that point in time, your audio would already be synced. Would you like to know the beautiful part? Most of the time when I do recordings, I require more than just two microphone channels, two audio channels. Sometimes I re require four or even ten. In those instances, I use a sound board or multiple handy field recorders. When I use a sound board, I still send that audio into my camera because the audio is going to sync up with the camera in the very first part. So the audio may be coming in through a different source and that gain staging and unity set for your gain is still important in that source. However, when I run the audio in through the camera, the camera's clock will synchronize the audio in the video. If you don't believe me, ask yourself this. When was the last time you used your camera or camcorder to record something and it was out of sync, the audio in the video? It wasn't, of course, it wasn't out of sync. It was out of sync because it was not out of sync because there is a clock that synchronizes the audio coming in, accounts for the delay, recognizes what kind of signal is coming in, whether it's mic or line, and then puts it together, synchronizes it for display over HDMI. It's already done. If you don't wish to work that way, there is another way we could do it. We'll talk about that way now. Here we go. This is an example of a powered microphone. This shotgun microphone right here is a condenser microphone. It gets the power it needs to work by plugging in to the Zoom F1. I like shotgun microphones, and this is a great one. On the microphone here, the actual input, we see that we have a gain knob. Recall a moment ago when I was talking about the microphone I'm using for my dynamic mic, my vocal right now, I said there was no gain knob. This is where an input could have additional settings for you to choose to affect your gain staging later on. If you're unaware of those settings, then you could have a problem. Okay, in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and turn my mic on. I do it by turning it on like this, and now you can see it's coming on. Now, I'm not going to necessarily mute this. Well, although I might, I'll mute this for a second so that we can continue. You will still see, but I'm going to mute my HDMI 1 audio. And now you'll notice that all of the levels are gone. You can still hear me because of the way I set up my recorder. If I didn't have the audio out running from this camcorder into that camcorder through another wireless transmitter, you wouldn't be able to hear anything right now. And I did that using the headphone out. This camcorder does not have an additional line or RCA or SDI out. Some camcorders do, and you could use that out as well. 
So because of that, you can see now that I've got this device in my hands and no signal. But wouldn't you like to have signal? Let's go ahead and turn the mic level signal. This one right here, we're going to turn it on. Now the mic level signal is on. And I want you to notice the shotgun mic is pointed away from me. Shotgun mics are great at rejecting noise in all axes, except for just behind them and in front of them. They're extremely sensitive to noises in front and behind them a little bit less. But off to the side, they shouldn't really be picking any noise up. And you'll notice some of you might say, you'll be in this situation, you'll say, hey, I'm in the green. How come everything is fine on my yellow box? It looks good, but it sounds terrible. Well, this is why. It sounds bad because it's bad because we're overmodulated. We're too close. We've, it's too high. I want you to see that even right here, just right now, our levels are too high. This microphone is not set properly. I'm going to turn on the tone generator because this one comes with one to help you understand that. Look, we're clipping. The signal is terrible. Yellow Box is attempting to do some internal noise reduction to save your audio for you. It did that by reducing that one red bar straight down, but it didn't help any. This microphone does not have a gain input for the output from the uh, line out to, or the microphone out to uh, Yellow Box. I'm going in through the mic input, otherwise this would say line. So we know that a mic input is minus uh, 10 decibels. This is actually a minus nine decibel mic input. I have that information and it's a plus five decibel uh, line in input. The standard is minus 10 for consumer and plus four for professional. So Yellow Box, the, the preamp in Yellow Box is doing a good job maintaining a prosumer level, level standard. In other videos, I've said I did not know what the uh, specific type of digital audio converter it was. However, I've had that recently confirmed by Yolo Live themselves, the company. In any event, what I need to do is adjust the input gain so I'm at minus six. You might say, Rob, you've been talking about minus 12 this whole time, and I have. However, this tone generator gives me some information. It's telling me that it's playing a one kilohertz tone, which is a sine wave, it should sound like like that, and it's playing it at minus six decibels. That's important. We have a standard reference point now. We know that this tone is exactly minus six decibels. So when we set yellow box up, we set it to minus six decibels, which is about three, possibly four, because the segments don't divide exactly equally uh, in the number of segments that yellow live has created for the menu. But three to four yellow segments means that we are around minus six decibels, and that's good to go. When we turn the tone generator off, and we go back to actually using the microphone, isn't it interesting to notice that the microphone levels still appear just as good now as they did a few minutes ago when we said that that audio was bad? The difference, however, was the audio itself was picking up from much farther away. Notice now I'm holding it out just like I did a few minutes ago, excuse me, uh, way over there. And it's now peaking three or four green segments in, which is roughly minus 20, minus 24 decibels. And it's only going up to the minus 12 decibels when we get it close. In fact, now it's not even peaking into the yellow. This microphone is set very well. However, if you wanted to use any way to any microphone, you could. I would still suggest running your sound into a camera or camcorder and then managing your audio from there. This would generally mean using a device like a field recorder, a six input, four output device, or even something like that Zoom F1, where your audio comes into it that you can adjust with levels that you can change, just like here, and then send that to your camera so that it can be synced up. In those situations, you will be far less likely to need to use any of the delay functions. And as we were going through it, you never want to have your audio in the plus 10 range if possible. That means something's wrong. Let me share with you what the concept is about gain. Analog signals and gain, well, gain signals themselves are logarithmic in nature. Okay, 
This is important. That means that changes surrounding the zero point, zero decibels, are small. So plus 10 to minus 10 are small change or small. But when you get into minus 18, 20, 24, 30, those become huge. And it's because of that doubling effect of every three decibels. So what we try to do is avoid clipping and distortion and noise by keeping our audio signal set as close to unity as is possible. And remember, unity is when everything is set so that it's optimized around the base signal path, which is usually around 0, minus 10, plus 10 on your faders, which is around the little hash mark in the center right there on your camcorder, which is around like number 5, number 6 on your gain knob on your field recorders, and is around the 0 level on your audio interface on Yellow Box. Friends, we have gone through a lot today, and I hope that you have found this video completely helpful. If you did, I need you to leave a comment down below and share what your favorite part was. Share with me how I helped you, and if you know some more information than I do, please go ahead and leave those pro tips down below. They are bound to help someone. I want to thank you so much for watching, and if you found any of this helpful, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and use the links down below to help support the work I do for you. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Bye for now.